What's up everybody, my name is Luke McMillan and today we're going to discuss how to become a clinical exercise physiologist and the process that I went through to be able to do so. Now if you're new to the channel and you find any of this content valuable, I'd really appreciate a quick thumbs up or a subscribe. It takes some decent time to do these videos and that's a quick, free, easy way that you can show your support to the channel. So uh, with that being said, let's get right into it. So this is an extended series that I'm just starting today. And uh, episode one today is all about the application, study, test, register process. And I'm also going to be going over the study resources that I use to become a CEP. So if you wanna skip to that part of the video, I'll link the time right in the description. And you can see the study resources that I use to become a CEP. Now, I did my certification process through CSEP. Uh, other certifying bodies will be pretty similar in their process, but not exactly the same. And I will say, if you want perfect information on this entire process, you can always check out CSEP's website or ACSM's website or whatever. And I'll link those in the description as well. But me, myself, I wish there was more videos out there like this. Uh, when I first started the process because I'm just someone who wants to sit down and watch a video and have someone talk to me about the process and uh, see the physical textbook and work me through how this will look. Now I will also say that I'm not going to be sharing any confidential information, any questions that I found on the test or anything like that. I'm just looking to guide you through the application, study, test, register process. And then in future videos, I'm going to be teaching some uh, lessons that will be very crucial to uh, passing the CEP test. So with all that being said, let's get right into it with the application process. The application process is your first step to becoming a CEP or a clinical exercise physiologist. Now remember, I certified through CSEP, so if you're certifying through a different organization, I recommend going right to the source and getting the logistics of what your application process looks like. Now some of these things will be standard across the board, but not all, so just go right to the organization's website and figure out what that will look like for you. So with CSEP, a bachelor's degree is required, and not only a bachelor's degree, but a bachelor's degree that meets the eight core competencies of study here. So these are the eight core competencies that your courses need to meet, and you need to be able to show proof that you have met these courses while studying and completing your bachelor's degree. Now, if you're currently taking your bachelor's degree and you want to ensure that you're going to be hitting these eight core competencies, there is something called the CSEP recommended course maps. So this is the CSEP recommended course maps here on the website. Again, the link will be in the description and this will help uh, you plan your studies to reach your goal of becoming a CEP and ensure that you're meeting those eight core competencies while you're studying. CSEP also requires 100 hours of practical experience. So in order to apply to become a CEP, you need to at least have 100 hours of practical experience. And they also strongly recommend an additional 150 hours of practical experience. And these additional 150 hours should encompass a lot of work with chronic conditions. Now, I remember when I was applying, this is something that I really had to think about. Uh, a lot of people so early on in their career or right after their bachelor's, they won't have a ton of hands-on experience with chronic conditions. But uh, think outside of the box for this one. Think of any professional setting that you could have had experience with chronic conditions. Here's a sample of a logbook, and this is pretty much what you will be submitting. And uh, this is a template that you can use here when applying and uh, both of those will be linked in the description so that you can use those and fill them out and submit during your application. And the last thing that I wanted to mention of the application process, it's $50. CSEP recommends some great resources in order to get you studying for your CEP. Now remember, obviously this is after your application has been approved. And they have a new clinical exercise physiology textbook or manual or whatever you want to call it. And if I had access to this uh, when I was studying, this is probably something that I would get. But I didn't have access to it. It wasn't out when I was studying for my CEP. Uh, but if I did, this is probably somewhere that I would start for sure. Now in regards to what I use personally to study for my CEP, uh, I use the CSEP Path Manual and I believe there's a second edition out now. And this will be crucial to your learning. Uh, it also includes a toolkit uh, and this includes a lot of the paperwork that CSEP uses and this will be extra important when you go for your practical testing component and we'll get 
into that later on in the video. In regards to other textbooks I used, this was great in terms of covering a lot of like the exercise science portion of studying for my CEP. So Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning by the NSCA, I would recommend that one. And this is probably what I use the majority of the time while I was studying for my CEP. It's called Clinical Exercise Physiology and uh, this was a lifesaver. This is probably what I use the majority of the time in regards to studying. Okay, in terms of other textbooks that I would recommend, I'd recommend a couple from ACSM and one is called the Guidelines for Exercise Testing and Prescription. I've heard great things about this and I actually use this textbook at work occasionally and uh, ACSM just came out with a new textbook that I just ordered and it's called ACSM's Clinical Exercise Physiology and that publication date is March 12, 2019 so that's somewhat new and if I had access to that while I was studying for my CEP that's probably something I would order as well. You've studied a lot and you're ready to take your test. Well, keep in mind during this entire process that there's not just one test, there's two. So there's a theory test and a practical test and you need to pass them both within a six month period of time. Now in regards to the theory test, they used to require a 75% or higher on the test. Uh, they've somewhat recently uh, dropped that to 70%. Once you've passed the test, it's just register and you need to have your first aid uh, within the past 12 months, I believe, in order to become a clinical exercise physiologist. Here's the website of CSEP uh, that you can visit to ensure that all of the information that I'm discussing today is up to date now. It is June 2020 and uh, I did my testing last year actually, but I have been uh, familiar and aware and I did my own research on the website the past couple of days to ensure that the information I'm providing you today is as up to date as possible, but it's great to go to the source uh, directly, especially if you're watching this video down the road. But I figured this video would be uh, something great for people to have if they're beginning the journey. This is an extended series that I'm looking at making. Today was just kind of an overview of my process and down the road, I'm looking to make lessons uh, on pertinent information that I wanted to be taught in somewhat of a video format that I think will be useful for your clinical exercise physiologist journey. Now, so thanks a lot for watching guys. Again, my name is Luke McMillan and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the content today. If you have, just give me a thumbs up or subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot.